The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis Translated by the Reverend William Benham The Fourth Book, Chapters 11 to 18 Chapter 11 That the body and blood of Christ and the Holy Scriptures are most necessary to a faithful soul. The Voice of the Disciple O most sweet Lord Jesus, how great is the blessedness of the devout soul that feedeth with thee in thy banquet, where there is set before it no other food than thyself, its only beloved, more to be desired than all the desires of the heart. And to me it would verily be sweet to pour forth my tears in thy presence from the very bottom of my heart, and with the pious Magdalene to water thy feet with my tears. But where is this devotion? Where the abundant flowing of holy tears? Surely in thy presence and in the presence of the holy angels my whole heart ought to burn and to weep for joy, for I have thee in the sacrament verily present, although hidden under other form. For in thine own divine brightness Mine eyes could not endure to behold thee, neither could the whole world stand before the splendour of the glory of thy majesty. In this, therefore, thou hast consideration unto my weakness, that thou hidest thyself under the sacrament. I verily possess and adore him whom the angels adore in heaven. I yet for a while by faith, but they by sight and without avail. It is good for me to be content with the light of true faith, and to walk therein until the day of eternal brightness dawn, and the shadows of figures flee away. Canticles 2 verse 17 But when that which is perfect is come, the using of sacraments shall cease, because the blessed, in heavenly glory, have no need of sacramental remedy for they rejoice unceasingly in the presence of God, beholding His glory face to face, and being changed from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, of the infinite God, they taste the word of God made flesh, as He was in the beginning, and remaineth for everlasting. When I think on these wondrous things, even spiritual comfort, whatsoever it be, becometh sore weariness to me. For so long as I see not openly my Lord in his own glory, I count for nothing all which I behold and hear in the world. Thou, O God, art my witness that nothing is able to comfort me, no creature is able to give me rest, save Thou, O my God, whom I desire to contemplate everlastingly. But this is not possible so long as I remain in this mortal state. Therefore ought I to set myself under great patience, and submit myself unto Thee in every desire. For even Thy saints, O Lord, who now rejoice with Thee in the kingdom of heaven, waited for the coming of Thy glory whilst they lived here in faith and great glory. What they believed, that believe I. What they hoped, I hope. Whither they have attained to, thither through thy grace hope I to come. I will walk meanwhile in faith, strengthened by the examples of the saints. I will have also holy books for comfort and for a mirror of life, and above them all, thy most holy body and blood shall be for me a special remedy and refuge. For two things do I feel to be exceedingly necessary to me in this life, without which this miserable life would be intolerable to me. Being detained in the prison of this body, I confess that I need two things, even food and light. Thou hast therefore given to me, who am so weak, thy sacred body and blood, for the refreshing of my soul and body, and hast set thy word for a lantern to my feet. Psalm 119, verse 105. Without these two I could not properly live, for the word of God is the light of my soul, and thy sacrament the bread of life. 
These may also be called the two tables, placed on this side and on that, in the treasury of thy holy church. One table is that of the sacred altar, bearing the holy bread, that is the precious body and blood of Christ. The other is the table of the divine law, containing holy doctrine, teaching the true faith, and leading steadfastly onwards even to that which is within the veil, where the Holy of Holies is. Thanks be unto thee, O Lord Jesus, light of light everlasting, for that table of holy doctrine which thou hast furnished unto us by thy servants the prophets and apostles and other teachers. Thanks be to thee, O Creator and Redeemer of men, who to make known thy love to the whole world has prepared a great supper, in which thou hast set forth for good not the typical Lamb, but thine own most holy body and blood, making all thy faithful ones joyful with this holy banquet, and giving them to drink the cup of salvation, wherein are all the delights of paradise, and the holy angels do feed with us, and with yet happier sweetness. O oh, how great and honourable is the office of the priests, to whom it is given to consecrate the sacrament of the Lord of Majesty with holy words, to bless it with the lips, to hold it in their hands, to receive it with their own mouth, and to administer it to others. O oh, how clean ought those hands to be, how pure the mouth, how holy the body, how unspotted the heart of the priest, to whom so often the author of purity entereth in. From the mouth of the priest ought naught to proceed but what is holy, what is honest and profitable, because he so often receiveth the sacrament of Christ. His eyes ought to be single and pure, seeing they are wont to look upon the body of Christ. The hands should be pure and lifted towards heaven, which are wont to hold within them the Creator of heaven and earth. To priests is it specially said in the law, Be ye holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Leviticus 19 verse 2 Assist us with thy grace, O Almighty God, that we who have taken upon us the priestly office may be able to converse worthily and devoutly with thee, in all purity and good conscience. And if we are not able to have our conversation in such innocency of life as we ought, yet grant unto us worthily to lament the sins which we have committed, and in the spirit of humility and full purpose of a good will to serve thee more earnestly for the future. Chapter 12 that he who is about to communicate with Christ ought to prepare himself with great diligence. The Voice of the Beloved I am the lover of purity and the giver of sanctity. I seek a pure heart, and there is the place of my rest. Prepare for me the larger upper room furnished, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Mark 14, verses 14 and 15. If thou wilt that I come unto thee and abide with thee, purge out the old leaven, 1 Corinthians verse 7, and cleanse the habitation of thy heart. Shut out the whole world and all the throng of sins. Sit as a sparrow alone upon the housetop, Psalm 102, verse 7 and think upon thy transgressions with bitterness of thy soul. For every one that loveth prepareth the best and fairest place for his beloved, because hereby the affection of him that entertaineth his beloved is known. Yet know thou that thou canst not make sufficient preparation out of the merit of any action of thine, even though thou shouldest prepare thyself for a whole year, and hadst nothing else in thy mind. But out of my tenderness and grace alone art thou permitted to draw nigh unto my table, as though a beggar were called to a rich man's dinner, 
and had no other recompense to offer him for the benefits done unto him, but to humble himself and to give him thanks. Do therefore as much as lieth in thee, and do it diligently, not out of custom nor of necessity, but with fear, reverence, and affection. Receive the body of thy beloved Lord God, who vouchsafeth to come unto thee. I am he who hath called thee, I commanded it to be done, I will supply what is lacking to thee. Come and receive me. When I give the grace of devotion, give thanks unto thy God. It is not because thou art worthy, but because I had mercy on thee. If thou hast not devotion, but rather feelest thyself dry, be instant in prayer, cease not to groan and knock, cease not until thou prevail to obtain some crumb or drop of saving grace. Thou hast need of me, I have no need of thee. Nor dost thou come to sanctify me, but I come to sanctify thee and make thee better. Thou comest that thou mayest be sanctified by me and be united to me, that thou mayest receive fresh grace and be kindled anew to amendment of life. See that thou neglect not this grace, but prepare thy heart with all diligence and receive thy beloved unto thee. But thou oughtest not only to prepare thyself for devotion before communion, thou must also keep thyself with all diligence therein after receiving the sacrament. Nor is less watchfulness needed afterwards than devout preparation beforehand. For good watchfulness afterwards becometh in turn the best preparation for the gaining more grace. For hereby is a man made entirely indisposed to good, if he immediately return from communion to give himself up to outward consolations. Beware of much speaking, remain in a secret place, and hold communion with thy God, for thou hast him whom the whole world cannot take away from thee. I am he to whom thou oughtest wholly to give thyself, so that now thou mayest live not wholly in thyself, but in me, free from all anxiety. Chapter 13 That the devout soul ought with the whole heart to yearn after union with Christ in the sacrament. The voice of the disciple. Who shall grant unto me, O Lord, that I may find thee alone, and open all my heart unto thee, and enjoy thee as much as my soul desireth, and that no man may henceforth look upon me, nor any creature move me, or have respect unto me, but thou alone speak unto me, and I unto thee, even as beloved is wont to speak unto beloved, and friend to feast with friend. For this do I pray, this do I long for, that I may be wholly united unto thee, and may withdraw my heart from all created things, and by means of holy communion and frequent celebration may learn more and more to relish heavenly and eternal things. Ah, Lord God, when shall I be entirely united and lost in thee, and altogether forgetful of myself, thou in me, and I in thee, John 15, verse 4. Even so grant that we may in like manner continue together in one. Verily thou art my beloved, the choicest among ten thousand. Canticles, verse 10. In whom my soul delighteth to dwell all the days of her life. Verily thou art my peacemaker, in whom is perfect peace and true rest apart from whom is labour and sorrow and infinite misery. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, and thy counsel is not with the wicked, but thy word is with the humble and the simple. O oh, how sweet, O Lord, is thy spirit, 
who that thou mightest manifest thy sweetness towards thy children, dost vouchsafe to refresh them with the bread which is full of sweetness, which cometh down from heaven. Verily there is no other nation so great, which hath its gods drawing nigh to them, as thou, our God, art present unto all thy faithful ones. Deuteronomy 4 verse 7 Unto whom for their daily solace, and for lifting up their heart unto heaven, thou givest thyself for their food and delight. For what other nation is there so renowned as the Christian people? Or what creature is so beloved under heaven as the devout soul to which God entereth in, that he may feed it with his glorious flesh? O unspeakable grace! O wonderful condescension! O immeasurable love, specially bestowed upon men! But what reward shall I give unto the Lord for this grace, for charity so mighty? There is nothing which I am able to present more acceptable than to give my heart altogether unto God, and to join it inwardly to Him. Then all my inward parts shall rejoice when my soul shall be perfectly united unto God. Then shall He say unto me, If thou wilt be with me, I will be with thee. And I will answer him, Vouchsafe, O Lord, to abide with me, I will gladly be with thee. This is my whole desire, even that my heart be united unto thee. Chapter 14 Of the fervent desire of certain devout persons to receive the body and blood of Christ. The Voice of the Disciple O oh, how great is the abundance of thy sweetness, O Lord, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee! When I call to mind some devout persons who draw nigh to thy sacrament, O Lord, with the deepest devotion and affection, then very often I am confounded in myself and blush for shame that I approach thine altar and table of holy communion so carelessly and coldly that I remain so dry and without affection, that I am not wholly kindled with love before thee, my God, nor so vehemently drawn and affected as many devout persons have been, who out of the very earnest desire of the communion and tender affection of heart could not refrain from weeping, but as it were with mouth of heart and body alike, panted inwardly after thee, O God, O fountain of life, having no power to appease or satiate their hunger, save by receiving thy body with all joyfulness and spiritual eagerness. O truly ardent faith of those, becoming a very proof of thy sacred presence, for they verily know their Lord in the breaking of bread, whose heart so ardently burneth within them, Luke 24, verse 32, when Jesus walked with them by the way. Ah me, far from me for the most part is such love and devotion as this, such vehement love and ardour. Be merciful unto me, O Jesus, good, sweet, and kind, and grant unto thy poor suppliant to feel sometimes in holy communion though it be but a little, the cordial affection of thy love, that my faith may grow stronger, my hope in thy goodness increase, and my charity, once kindled within me by the tasting of the heavenly manna, may never fail. But thy mercy is able even to grant me the grace which I long for, and to visit me most tenderly with the spirit of fervour when the day of thy good pleasure shall come. For, although I burn not with desire so vehement as theirs who are specially devout towards thee, yet, through thy grace, I have a desire after that greatly inflamed desire, praying and desiring to be made partaker with all those who so fervently love thee, and to be numbered among their holy company. Chapter 15 
that the grace of devotion is acquired by humility and self-denial. The Voice of the Beloved Thou oughtest to seek earnestly the grace of devotion, to ask it fervently, to wait for it patiently and faithfully, to receive it gratefully, to preserve it humbly, to work with it diligently, and to leave to God the time and manner of heavenly visitation until it come. Chiefly oughtest thou to humble thyself when thou feelest inwardly little or no devotion, yet not to be too much cast down, nor to grieve out of measure. God oft times giveth in one short moment what he hath long time denied. He sometimes giveth at the end what at the beginning of prayer he hath deferred to give. If grace were always given immediately, and were at hand at the wish, it would be hardly bearable to weak man. Wherefore the grace of devotion is to be waited for with a good hope and with humble patience. Yet impute it to thyself and to thy sins when it is not given, or when it is mysteriously taken away. It is sometimes a small thing which hindereth and hideth grace, if indeed that ought to be called small and not rather great, which hindereth so great a good. But if thou remove this, be it small or great, and perfectly overcome it, thou wilt have what thou hast asked. For immediately that thou hast given thyself unto God with all thine heart, and hast sought neither this nor that according to thine own will and pleasure, but hast altogether settled thyself in him, thou shalt find thyself united and at peace, because nothing shall give thee so sweet relish and delight as the good pleasure of the divine will. Whosoever therefore shall have lifted up his will unto God with singleness of heart, and shall have delivered himself from every inordinate love or dislike of any created thing, he will be the most fit for receiving grace, and worthy of the gift of devotion. For where the Lord findeth empty vessels, 2 Kings 4, there giveth he his blessing. And the more perfectly a man forsaketh things which cannot profit, and the more he dieth to himself, the more quickly doth grace come, the more plentifully doth it enter in, and the higher doth it lift up the free heart. Then shall he see, and flow together, and wonder, and his heart shall be enlarged within him. Isaiah 60 verse 5 because the hand of the Lord is with him, and he hath put himself wholly in his hand, even for ever. Lo, thus shall the man be blessed, that seeketh God with all his heart, and receiveth not his soul in vain. This man in receiving the Holy Eucharist obtaineth the great grace of divine union, because he hath not regard to his own devotion and comfort, but, above all devotion and comfort, to the glory and honour of God. Chapter 16 That we ought to lay open our necessities to Christ and to require His grace. The Voice of the Disciple O most sweet and loving Lord, whom now I devoutly desire to receive, Thou knowest my infirmity and the necessity which I suffer, in what evils and vices I lie, how often I am weighed down, tempted, disturbed and defiled. I come unto Thee for remedy, I beseech of Thee consolation and support. I speak unto Thee who knowest all things, to whom all my secrets are open and who alone art able perfectly to comfort and help me. Thou knowest what good thing I most stand in need of, and how poor I am in virtues. Behold, I stand poor and naked before thee, 
requiring grace and imploring mercy. Refresh the hungry suppliant, kindle my coldness with the fire of thy love, illuminate my blindness with the brightness of thy presence. Turn thou all earthly things into bitterness for me, all grievous and contrary things into patience, all things worthless and created into contempt and oblivion. Lift up my heart unto thee in heaven, and suffer me not to wander over the earth. Be thou alone sweet unto me from this day forward for ever, because thou alone art my meat and drink, my love and joy, my sweetness and my whole good. O oh, that thou wouldest altogether by thy presence kindle, consume and transform me into thyself that I may be made one spirit with thee by the grace of inward union and the melting of earnest love. Suffer me not to go away from thee hungry and dry, but deal mercifully with me, as oftentimes thou hast dealt wondrously with thy saints. What marvel if I should be wholly kindled from thee and in myself should utterly fail since thou art fire always burning and never failing, love purifying the heart and enlightening the understanding. Chapter 17 Of fervent love and vehement desire of receiving Christ The Voice of the Disciple With the deepest devotion and fervent love, with all affection and fervour of heart, I long to receive thee, O Lord, even as many saints and devout persons have desired thee in communicating, who were altogether well pleasing to thee by their sanctity of life, and dwelt in all ardent devotion. O my God, eternal love, my whole good, happiness without measure, I long to receive thee with the most vehement desire and becoming reverence which any saint ever had or could have. And although I be unworthy to have all those feelings of devotion, yet do I offer thee the whole affection of my heart, even as though I alone had all those most grateful inflamed desires. Yea, also, whatsoever things a pious man is able to conceive and long for, all these things with the deepest veneration and inward fervour do I offer and present unto thee. I desire to reserve nothing unto myself, but freely and entirely to offer myself and all that I have unto thee for a sacrifice. O Lord my God, my Creator and Redeemer, with such affection, reverence, praise and honour, with such gratitude, worthiness and love, with such faith, hope and purity, do I desire to receive Thee this day, as Thy most blessed Mother, the glorious Virgin Mary, received and desired Thee, when she humbly and devoutly answered the angel, who brought unto her the glad tidings of the mystery of the Incarnation. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Luke 1 verse 38 And as thy blessed forerunner, the most excellent of saints, John Baptist, being full of joy in thy presence, leapt while yet in the womb of his mother, for joy in the Holy Ghost, and afterwards discerning Jesus walking amongst men, humbled himself exceedingly, and said, with devout affection, The friend of the bridegroom, who standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. John 3 verse 29 even so I wish to be inflamed with great and holy desires, and to present myself unto thee with my whole heart. Whence also, on behalf of myself and of all commended to me in prayer, I offer and present unto thee the jubilation of all devout hearts, their ardent affections, their mental ecstasies, 
and supernatural illuminations and heavenly visions, with all the virtues and praises celebrated and to be celebrated by every creature in heaven and earth, to the end that by all thou mayest worthily be praised and glorified for ever. Receive my prayers, O Lord my God, and my desires of giving thee infinite praise and unbounded benediction, which, according to the multitude of thine unspeakable greatness, are most justly due unto thee. These do I give thee, and desire to give every day and every moment, and with beseechings and affectionate desires I call upon all celestial spirits and all thy faithful people to join with me in rendering thee thanks and praises. Let all peoples, nations, and tongues praise thee, and magnify thy holy and sweet-sounding name, with highest jubilations and ardent devotion. And let all who reverently and devoutly celebrate thy most high sacrament, and receive it with full assurance of faith, be accounted worthy to find grace and mercy with thee, and intercede with all supplication for me, a sinner. And when they shall have attained unto their wished-for devotion and joyous union with thee, and shall depart full of comfort and wondrously refreshed from thy holy, heavenly table, let them vouchsafe to be mindful of me, for I am poor and needy. Chapter 18 That a man should not be a curious searcher of the sacrament, but a humble imitator of Christ, submitting his sense to holy faith. The Voice of the Beloved Thou must take heed of curious and useless searching into this most profound sacrament, if thou wilt not be plunged into the abyss of doubt he that is a searcher of majesty shall be oppressed by the glory thereof. Proverbs 25 verse 27, Vulgate God is able to do more than man can understand. A pious and humble search after truth is to be allowed when it is always ready to be taught and striving to walk after the wholesome opinions of the fathers. Blessed is the simplicity which leaveth alone the difficult paths of questionings, and followeth the plain and firm steps of God's commandments. Many have lost devotion whilst they sought to search into deeper things. Faith is required of thee, and a sincere life, not loftiness of intellect, nor deepness in the mysteries of God, if thou understandest not, nor comprehendest the things which are beneath thee, how shalt thou comprehend those which are above thee? Submit thyself unto God, and humble thy sense to faith, and the light of knowledge shall be given thee, as shall be profitable and necessary unto thee. There are some who are grievously tempted concerning faith and the sacrament, but this is not to be imputed to themselves, but rather to the enemy. Care not then for this, dispute not with thine own thoughts, nor make answer to the doubts which are cast into thee by the devil, but believe the words of God, believe his saints and prophets, and the wicked enemy shall flee from thee. Often it profiteth much that the servant of God endureth such things, for the enemy tempteth not unbelievers and sinners, because he already hath secure possession of them, but he tempteth and harasseth the faithful and devout by various means. Go forward therefore with simple and undoubting faith, and draw nigh unto the sacrament with supplicating reverence, and whatsoever thou art not enabled to understand, that commit without anxiety to Almighty God. God deceiveth thee not. 
He is deceived who believeth too much in himself. God walketh with the simple, reveal himself to the humble, giveth understanding to babes, openeth the sense to pure minds, and hideth grace from the curious and proud. Human reason is weak and may be deceived, but true faith cannot be deceived. All reason and natural investigation ought to follow faith, not to precede it, nor to break it. For faith and love do here especially take the highest place, and work in hidden ways in this most holy and exceeding excellent sacrament. God who is eternal and incomprehensible and of infinite power, doth great and inscrutable things in heaven and in earth, and his wonderful works are past finding out. If the works of God were of such sort that they might easily be comprehended by human reason, they should no longer be called wonderful or unspeakable. End of The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis Translated by the Rev. William Benham and read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes